You are looking live at the crowds of protesters gathered at Tahrir Square. Egypt's military rulers today agreed to form a national salvation government to speed up the process towards presidential elections. But as the fourth day of protests continue, three American students, Luke Gates, Derek Sweeney and Gregory Porter, have been arrested, accused of setting off Molotov cocktails and clashing with police in Tahrir Square. Gates has been active on Twitter over the past few days, tweeting about his involvement in the protests. I'm quoting him, six hours at Tahrir, enough tear gas for tonight. Meanwhile, Egyptians have swarmed Cairo's Tahrir Square in response to a call for a million-man march against the country's military rulers. And that is where we find NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, who joins us now on the phone. Good evening, Richard. Good evening. There have been some developments just recently. A lot of people are complaining of uh, intense tear gas in the center of Tahrir Square. This after people vowed to stay in Tahrir Square, uh, angry at the speech given by Field Marshal Hussein Tantawi, in which he did, yes, offer some compromises, moving up the date of the presidential election, but also insulting the protesters, calling them effectively saboteurs, people who are trying to destroy Egypt's economy, me insult the military. So while he did offer some concessions, he made no indication that he is willing to step down immediately, which is what the protesters want. And he blamed the protesters for uh, pushing Egypt further into instability. Now, the president has repeatedly spoken of his support for protesters on the ground in Egypt, in Cairo. Is there anything at stake for the United States with all of this activity going on Richard. I think that's what people are missing, perhaps, um, with all of the excitement in Tahrir and the hundreds of thousands that are pouring into the square. It's important to ask, what exactly is at stake here? The Egyptian military, even through Mubarak, has been in power in Egypt for nearly 60 years. And for at least decades, it's been a close U.S. ally. It receives money from the United States, more than a billion dollars a year. It defends a peace treaty with Israel. It is at times often a Middle East peace broker. So would un uh, toppling the Egyptian military be good for the United States? Uh, I think that is still an unclear question. The Egyptian people, who I put this question to today, said that's really not their concern. Their concern right now is the Egyptian military. Uh, its primary goal is to defend the Egyptian people, and instead the Egyptian military has been attacking the, the Egyptian people, attacking demonstrators. But the United States has a, a lot riding on what happens in Egypt, because Egypt has been a corner of stability even after Mubarak, and if the military went, it's, it's unclear what would replace it. Indeed. Now, we know that these protests over the last four days have got violent, thousands have been injured, at least 28 have died. Have you got any news on these three American students who were arrested today? Do you have any information about their current circumstances, Richard? Not their very current circumstances, not of the last few hours. Uh, we've spoken with university officials, we've spoken with embassy officials, who, who all confirm that these three Americans were in fact detained. Uh, their images were put on Egyptian television, these three Americans looking quite uh, sheepish, being uh, photographed and videotaped by Egyptian authorities with bottles uh, that look like Molotov cocktails in front of them. The assumption is that they're going to be deported at some some stage, but we have not received any confirmation of where they are or, or when that might happen. I'm sure you'll bring us that information when you get it. Under the military's original timetable, Richard, presidential elections were expected to take place in 2013. We're now hearing that these will likely take place next June. Is this the direct result of these protests? It is. And the, even the previous date you had mentioned was a very unclear unclear number, an unclear date. What the Egyptian military has been promising is a process that will lead to, to, to democracy. And it is a very long process that has a tremendous amount of wiggle room within it. The elections that are supposed to, and according to Egyptian officials tonight, are still supposed to take place in a week's time for the parliamentary election, just start a long process. 
First, the election is going to take place for three months. Then another upper house of parliament election. Then writing a constitution six months after that. Then once the constitution is written, a referendum. And then after the referendum, assuming the constitution passes, then there would be presidential elections and then the military would step down. It was assumed that, yes, this would take place sometime in 2013, but as you can imagine, with all of these different factors here, it could have gone on well beyond that. Remember, in Egypt, emergency law was put in right after the assassination of Anwar Sadat, 1981. It's still in place. So what we had today was a definitive date from the military, and that's important, saying, yes, presidential elections will take place in 2012 in the summer if they take place, if the military keeps its word, and that's what people in, in Tahrir Square do not believe, and that's why they are still in the square demanding a, a, a much more immediate transition. NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel, as ever, thank you, and you stay